As the tensions of the Cold War escalated during the early 1960s, so did the arms race between the world's superpowers, and the Soviets were at their peak of technological development. Although very few people could infiltrate the Iron Curtain, there was a strong rumor that the Soviets were working on a tank far more potent than the T-62 and the T-54-55. The Americans and West Germans, who had just recently built the M-60 and Leopard 1 tanks, were afraid of this new secret weapon and decided to join forces to create a vehicle that would be more powerful and way ahead of anything built at the time. This marked the first time the two nations worked together on a tank project, and the result was the MBT-70. However, having the US Army and the Bundeswehr join forces would prove a far more challenging endeavor than expected. A new Soviet threat. By 1965, the United States Army had made the M60 its main battle tank, while its NATO counterpart, the West German Bundeswehr, had recently developed the well-rounded Leopard 1. Both tanks proved outstanding and performed without issues against any other armored vehicle the Soviet Union could field at the time. However, the paranoia around the secretly improved version of the Soviet T-62 main battle tank was taken seriously by the military staff of the United States and West Germany, as the engineers from both countries believed their new tanks would not match the Soviet Colossus and decided to act accordingly. Both nations shared the same threat, the same enemy, and were confronted in the same theater of operations. They were sure they could work together on a new project to overcome the Soviet Union. Still, many wondered if that would be possible at all. It was then that American Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara stepped in to do something no one had ever thought of, get the Americans and West Germans to jointly develop a new super tank. McNamara has an idea. Robert McNamara put the best of his industrial management capabilities, learned at Ford Motor Company before becoming Secretary of Defense, into the production of military resources. Several NATO states then fielded dozens of weapon systems that had little in common, especially regarding standard ammunition calibers and vehicle spare parts. Still, McNamara managed to convince the US Armor Branch and the German Bundeswehr to develop a tank that could meet the standards of both armies. His high regard for German engineering led to the August 1963 Memorandum of Understanding, and both nations agreed to organize a joint design team to develop the MBT-70 tank. Former tank commander, U.S. General Wellborn G. Dolvin, was chosen to lead the U.S. team, whose contractor was General Motors. Meanwhile, the Bundeswehr formed the German Development Corporation, which comprised the most prominent German industrial firms. Discussions between the two teams began almost immediately, as every side wanted to design the tank according to its own philosophy. Still, neither side was entirely convinced, and there were many differences starting with the use of either the metric system or SAE units for the specifics of the gun, turret, and general equipment. McNamara tried to solve the issue, but only managed to reach an agreement in which both sides would use their own measurements on the parts they designed. The MBT-70 tank. Despite the disputes, the Germans and Americans immediately got to work. Some of the MBT-70 features were truly ahead of their time, and the tank was designed from scratch to innovate with a new tank concept. The MBT-70 was 3.5 meters long, but reached over 9.3 meters with the gun placed forward. Unlike the American M60, which was a tank of colossal proportions, the MBT-70 had a low silhouette. It was over 1.8 meters tall from the turret to the floor. Its standard height was over 2.6 meters, but thanks to an effective hydro-pneumatic suspension system, it could be heightened or lowered, depending on the road, to bolster cross-country performance or enhance the desired combat capabilities. Moreover, the tank could kneel forward or backward to improve the gun's accuracy and range when targeting long-distance objectives. Additionally, the hydro-pneumatic suspension system served a defensive purpose, as it could fortify hull-down positions to protect the tank from the rear. turret and armament. The low silhouette blueprint resulted in a redesigned interior, as there was no room in the hull for the driver and the crew. 
Instead, their stations were located in the tank's turret, which offered protection against nuclear, biological, and chemical threats. However, the driver's seat had to be placed in an individual cupola that was constantly rotating so that he could see in the same direction, despite the turns of the turret. Plus, it could also be spun so the tank could be driven backward at full speed. Although innovative, this resulted in motion sickness for the drivers, who were used to always remaining stationary. As for the main armament, the Germans settled for an auto-loading 120mm Rheinmetall gun. However, the Americans preferred the 152mm XM-150 gun and launcher. Besides firing a wide variety of tank rounds, such as high-explosive, anti-tank, and armor-piercing discarding Sabbat rounds, the tank was also expected to fire the Shalali-guided missile with a laser rangefinder, which had a range of some 3,000 meters. Secondary armament comprised a remote-controlled 20mm RH-202 autocannon to take down armored vehicles and aircraft, and a machine gun was mounted coaxially for close quarters. Finally, the tank was fitted with an M73, while the German prototype was armed with an MG3 machine gun. The Fastest Tank The MBT-70's armor was made up of two layers. The outer layer was made of high-performance armor, produced in plates that were 40 millimeters thick, and it was designed to withstand impacts from anti-tank rounds. In addition, the front of the hull and turret were covered by spaced armor, and the inner layer protected the three-man crew from spalling or internal armor fragmentation. Despite the MBT-70's approximate weight of 51 tons, it had excellent mobility thanks to the innovative suspension system. It could achieve a top speed of over 69 kilometers per hour, and was faster than the M60, the Leopard 1, and the Soviet T-64. Combined with its top-notch cross-country capabilities, no main battle tank in the market could match the reliability of the MBT-70. Still, the tank was far from perfect. Drivers constantly complained about the rotating cupola, and the American XM-150 gun and launcher failed to fire the Shalali missile effectively without issues. Also, to maintain the incredible speeds of the MBT-70, the American model had to be fitted with a turbine engine that proved problematic given its exceptional care. Fourteen MBT-70 hulls were built between the Americans and the Germans, and testing ran from 1966 to 1968. However, the cost of the project dramatically escalated. Each MBT-70 was estimated to cost over $1 million in 1969, and the whole project was initially expected to cost $80 million, but had risen to over $300 million as 1970 approached. Differences the United States and West German governments were no longer convinced of the tank and the ongoing issues between both teams. As a result, they decided to part ways before spending more money on a tank that would never see the light of day. However, it was not all in vain. The Bundeswehr would go on to develop the effective Leopard 2, with many of the ideas implemented in the MBT-70 prototype. As for the US, the Army would eventually develop the XM-803 prototype, which resulted in the current M1 Abrams tank. The MBT-70 project became the last time two nations joined forces to produce a main battle tank. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.